Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Jennifer Griffin. I'm an integrative and functional medicine physician here at Sutter Health Institute for Health and Healing in Roseville, California. A little bit about my background. I originally started in family medicine and then pursued an integrative medicine fellowship through Dr. Andrew Wiles program at the University of Arizona. I've also trained in functional medicine through the Institute for Functional Medicine and have expertise in mind-body medicine. As mentioned, I currently practice at Sutter Health's Institute for Health and Healing, where we provide a comprehensive integrative medicine program offering personalized holistic care that combines conventional, complementary, and functional medicine. We use a collaborative team-based approach um, so that our patients can benefit from a variety of perspectives, whether we're treating chronic conditions or helping patients who are largely seeking to maximize their health. So today I'm going to talk about um, perimenopause and a holistic approach to hormone balance during this time. Um, we'll talk about a specific case um, about a patient uh, of mine who uh, was going through perimenopause. I'll talk about how we addressed that. Um, we'll talk about estrogen dominance, which is her key issue. I'll discuss what that means, how it's diagnosed, um, and then go into a detailed treatment plan that includes nutrition and lifestyle. I'll talk about hormone testing, endocrine disrupting chemicals, and mind-body medicine. So in integrative and functional medicine, um, our approach um, is uses a biopsychosocial spiritual model. And this is a whole, a whole person approach um, that understands that all of these aspects of one's life um, contribute to one's overall health and well-being. Um, there's an emphasis on food and lifestyle, um, looking at nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress, toxins, um, and each plan is personalized um, to the individual person. So let's go right into this case. Um, this was or is my patient, Linda. She's a 43-year-old female and came to me with the following issues. Um, for some time now, she'd been feeling um, more tired than usual, was experiencing some anxiety, um, some irritability. Um, her, she was having PMS symptoms the week before her menstrual cycle or her period. Um, she's been having a harder time concentrating when homeschooling her children. Her sleep was, was not as good as it used to be. And overall, she just wasn't handling stress as well as she used to. Um, in the assessment, um, we have a 90-minute assessment here um, uh, for our first visit with patients. So I really get an opportunity to understand um, her history um, and her life so we know where to begin with our interventions. Um, Linda's happily married. She homeschools her two children who are seven and nine years old. She volunteers part-time um, at church and also works part-time in her husband's business. So she's quite busy. Um, her husband works full-time and also travels a good bit for work. Um, her downtime is television after bed, uh, or excuse me, after children go to bed. Um, and her exercise um, is about one to two times a week um, for 30 to 40 minutes. Um, she doesn't smoke. Um, she is drinking about seven to 10 drinks a week and having two to three cups of coffee a day. Um, in addition, we, we go through a comprehensive review of systems. Um, and for Linda, it shows that she's had 15 pounds of weight gain in the last two years, which of course concerns her. Um, she's been having some constipation. Um, her PMS symptoms, um, which were very mild and manageable, um, have now become unmanageable, where she's experiencing irritability, breast tenderness, a lot of bloating the week before her periods. Um, her periods have also become heavier and more frequent. She used to be cycling every four weeks, and now she's cycling every three weeks. 
Um, in addition to that, her libido has dropped. So Linda took these issues to her primary care physician, um, who she has a good relationship with, and her physician recommended um, an antidepressant medication to handle her mood and her PMS and suggested she exercise more to help her weight and offered her a prescription for a birth control pill um, for the PMS symptoms and the heavier periods. Um, so she did decide to try the antidepressant and she took that for three months um, and did find a, a mild improvement in her mood, um, but overall felt it was numbing her mood at the same time. Um, and it certainly wasn't helping her sex drive, so she decided to stop that. Um, she'd like to exercise more, but is looking for more specific direction on, on where she can fit that into her life, um, and never started the birth control pill as she just didn't like the idea of taking hormonal contraception to manage her symptoms. So I like to go through a typical day um, from start to finish with my patients. Um, and I detailed that out here for Linda. So she wakes in the morning um, and she's generally waking very tired um, and needs coffee to get started. Um, breakfast is, is sort of quick, um, usually a bagel or bowl of oatmeal, and she's having generally two cups of coffee before she gets started with her homeschool session with her two children. Um, after that session, lunch is a sandwich or leftover dinner, um, a glass of water, and then she's starting her afternoon session, and she's about an hour into that crashing, um, just feeling very tired and grabbing a third cup of coffee or a soda at that time, and when possible, she's catching a quick nap. Um, Afternoon snacks might include cheese and crackers or chips and fruit. Um, and then dinner time is usually a meat protein, a vegetable, and a starch, which would be rice or pasta um, with a salad, um, having a glass of wine pretty much every night with dinner, um, and dessert three to four nights a week. Um, evening routine, she's bathing and getting her kids to bed. Um, finishing up whatever household chores there are, and then her time for herself isn't until about 10 o'clock, um, where she's generally winding down with an hour of television and um, some nights a second glass of wine. So um, Linda's diet is not so unusual. Um, it, it's not a terrible diet, um, but it, it is an inflammatory diet, and this is why. Um, it, she's, there's too much refined carbohydrates in her diet, um, excess sugar, excess caffeine, which isn't helping her energy um, or her sleep. Um, we know that, that sugar and caffeine, of course, can provoke anxiety um, and cause um, unrestful sleep. Um, her diet is also not um, adequate in phytonutrients, which are fruits and vegetables, and all the vitamins and minerals that come um, from fruits and vegetables that help our energy, our mood, um, and our detoxification mechanisms. It's also deficient in healthy fats and um, definitely not enough water. Um, so, so these excesses and deficiencies in combination with lack of adequate exercise leads to chronic inflammation. Um, so we know inflammation is a good thing in acute situations, like when we have an injury, we need inflammation to happen. Inflammation brings um, red blood cells to the area to help us heal. Um, but inflammation, when it's, when it's going on um, in an uncontrolled way, in a chronic way, um, is not healthy. Um, in fact, it's very problematic and it's well established that chronic inflammation leads to chronic disease and rapid aging. Um, and we call that inflammaging, um, a term that combines um, chronic inflammation and rapid aging. So as far as lab work, the initial conventional type labs I ordered for Linda included a complete blood count to see if she was anemic. Um, and she 
uh, was not. Um, I also checked an iron level on her because many women are not anemic. Um, their iron levels have not dropped so low that they're anemic. However, they are iron deficient, which Linda is. Um, and that can lead to symptoms of sluggishness and uh, difficulty concentrating. Um, so her vitamin B12 level was normal. B12 is important for neurologic function, cognition, and mood. Um, her vitamin D level was low, which can in fact impact energy and mood um, and immunity. Um, her thyroid labs were showing that she had sluggish thyroid function. And her blood sugar tested, testing showed that her fasting glucose was elevated um, in a pre-diabetic um, uh, level. Our ideal fasting glucose should be below 90. And as you see here, Linda's was 108. So as far as specialty labs, functional medicine labs, um, I did saliva hormone testing on Linda. Um, and I did that so I could look at her, her sex hormone levels, including her estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, as well as her um, adrenal hormones, which are cortisol and DHEA. Uh, saliva also offers a non-invasive way to test these hormones. Um, so what we see here is that um, Linda's hormone levels show that she has a normal estrogen and testosterone um, on day 21 of her cycle, um, but her progesterone level is way low here. Um, so this is where I want to introduce the concept of estrogen dominance, where she is having um, an an not an elevated estrogen, but estrogen relative to progesterone is high. So the ratio of the two is off. Um, and we want to remember the primary role of progesterone is to balance the strong effects of estrogen. And when that ratio is off, many symptoms can occur, such as those that Linda is experiencing. Um, her adrenal labs show um, that, so two adrenal hormones are DHEA and cortisol. Cortisol is a um, hormone that's released from our adrenal glands and is our stress hormone. Um, it's an important hormone. It's a natural, healthy, adaptive response to stress to have cortisol released when we need it. Um, however, when stress is chronic over time, our adrenal glands can't always keep up um, with the the demand for cortisol. And over time, that cortisol can start to fall, um, which is happening here for Linda. So, so we do a level in the morning soon after waking. And the level, you know, ideally we're looking for it to be mid-range or, or at the very least. Linda's sluggish here, as you can see. Um, the cortisol is lowish. Um, and then in the evening, we're looking that it's dropping down to um, normal levels, which it is. Um, but this lack of cortisol elevation when she wakes can definitely be why she's waking so tired. So chronic stress um, is a big factor in hormone imbalance. And this slide shows um, how stress impacts the hormones at different levels. Um, so cortisol is the upstream hormone that impacts the balance of our thyroid and sex hormones. Um, and this is why it's so important that we're looking at all of these hormones when we're addressing um, perimenopausal symptoms and hormone balance in general. Um, and why it's so important to get a handle on stress um, because it does have this big impact um, on hormones, which are such an important part of our health and well being. So, this graph um, is meant to um, depict the concept of cortisol steel. Um, cortisol steel is what happens under chronic stress when our, um, our hormone production is pushing towards the production of cortisol and taking away from the production of progesterone. So to walk you through this, cholesterol is at the top and this is what we make our hormones from and why it's important that we have adequate amount of healthy fat in our diet. From cholesterol, we make a parent hormone called pregnenolone. 
Um, and pregnenolone is a precursor hormone to both cortisol and our sex hormones, as you see here. It can push towards progesterone, it can push towards cortisol, and it can push towards DHEA, which then pushes towards estrogen. So with estrogen dominance, um, this can occur either due to an estrogen excess, which can happen in obese women because we make estrogen in our fat cells, um, or can happen with overexposure to what are called endocrine disrupting chemicals, um, which I'll discuss later, and can also happen if we are not detoxing our estrogen well, meaning clearing it out of our body. Um, it can also be due to progesterone deficiency, which is the case here for Linda, due to chronic stress, and in some women due to lack of ovulation. So estrogen dominance can lead to irregular periods, PMS symptoms, menstrual migraines, um, anxiety and irritability. Um, it can lead to overgrowth of tissues, reproductive tissues, therefore uterine fibroids, endometriosis. Um, it can lead to infertility and weight gain. Other common symptoms that I didn't list here include fatigue and hair loss. So progesterone is, counterbalances estrogen. Um, whereas estrogen is more proliferative, progesterone sort of it calms things down, is more, is more anti-proliferative. So for example, estrogen helps us build up our uterine lining, wherein progesterone, once it's released after ovulation, helps maintain that uterine lining. It stops the building of the lining. So if we have estrogen dominance, we're gonna, we're gonna have an excess there, and there it can lead to excessive bleeding or irregular bleeding. Um, excess estrogen can lead to fluid retention. Um, again, the imbalance of not having enough progesterone to act as a diuretic. It can also uh, uh, stimulate breast cells, um, causing breast tenderness, swelling, and cysts, whereas progesterone protects against cyst growth. Um, and estrogen can increase our brain excitability. Um, so excess estrogen and lack of progesterone can cause that anxiety, irritability, and insomnia. So moving into our goals, how are we going to address this estrogen dominance? Um, so goal one is to reduce that chronic inflammation. And we want to do this by addressing her nutrition, um, her toxin elimination, and her sleep. Um, so for Linda, we want to limit her refined carbohydrates, her sugar, her caffeine, and alcohol. Um, we want to bring in more good, healthy, clean proteins, healthy fats, and healthy phytonutrients from fruits and vegetables. Um, we want to support her elimination. Um, detoxification, remembering that we detox through our stool, our sweat, our urine, and our tears. Um, and we also want to support her sleep and her circadian clock. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to consider some supplements for her, um, including fish oil, um, herbs, we'll talk about that in a minute, and replacing those vitamins and minerals that are deficient. So um, for Linda, um, it's important for all of my patients that we, we establish achievable goals um, um, because I, I want my patients to leave feeling like they can get started right away with what we've, we've decided on um, and that, that the initial steps are manageable. There's no rush to get her feeling better. It took a while to um, feel this way and we know it's gonna take a little bit of time um, to get to um, feeling better overall. So for Linda, we start talking about diet. We're gonna switch up her breakfast, pull out some of those refined carbohydrates, um, have her bring in some, some eggs for protein, some avocado for healthy fats, um, some yogurt for that protein source as well, um, or a protein smoothie for breakfast. And we're gonna try to bring down her caffeine, bring her down to one cup a day, and substitute um, with green tea. 
um, which offers um, many antioxidants um, to help her combat inflammation. Um, we want to reduce her alcohol to less than a drink a day. We know that women are at increased risk for breast cancer who drink more than one drink a day. Um, and then we want to reduce her sugar overall for obvious reasons, eliminate the soda altogether, um, get her exercising more, moving more. She used to do yoga before she had children, really had a, enjoyed her yoga practice and has let that um, fall um, out of her schedule and wants to bring that back. So she's going to try to bring two classes in a week. Um, and then replace those um, deficiencies. So it put her on some iron, some vitamin D, and some fish oil um, to help her figure out what to buy as far as organic. I refer her to the Environmental Working Group's website, where she can look up um, the list of foods um, in the in the top 12, which we call the dirty dozen. Um, foods that are um, heavy in pesticides, and the Clean 15 um, that um, she does not necessarily have to buy organic. It's ideal to, to get all of our food organic if possible, but that's not possible for everyone. Um, so this really offers a, a nice way to differentiate. Okay, so after, so Linda started with those interventions and three months later, um, I saw her again, and at that point, her energy was improving, her sleep was improving, um, but she was still needing help with the PMS symptoms, libido, um, and was still dealing with some constipation. Um, so at that point, we started to talk about her microbiome health um, and added in some fermented foods, um, probiotic type foods. Um, reminded her about eating adequate amounts of fiber, so largely the fruits and vegetables. Um, at that point, she was at about three servings of vegetables a day, and we're, we're going to double that to six servings. Um, and we do that by including some in breakfast, some in lunch, and some in dinner. Um, and then get her hydrating well. Um, so um, our goal is to be drinking a half ounce of water per pound of body weight. So if we divide our weight in two, that, lead, that gives us the number in ounces that we need to be drinking daily. Um, and then also talk to her about what we call time-restricted feeding, which is um, a long overnight rest at night um, from food, allowing our digestion to rest and our cells to repair. Um, and ta also talked about circadian clock. So this is um, uh, kind of our internal system, internal program that mediates our daily rhythms. Um, and scientists are starting to discover that, that the connections between our circadian clocks um, and our health, overall health, are very strong. Um, and so we, we want to be trying to eat around the same time every day, um, go to bed around the same time every evening, and make sure we get exposure to sunlight, um, as, as this helps our melatonin production um, so that we can um, sleep better. And there's a lot more information uh, about the circadian clock and the research around this here at this website that I've listed. Um, if you're interested in reading more about um, Dr. Sachinanda Panda's work. Okay, also um, want, uh, for Linda, um, recommended that she start this herb um, to help her estrogen to progesterone balance um, called chaseberry, which is one of my favorite herbs um, because it can really help with that um, imbalance of estrogen to progesterone and um, relieves PMS symptoms. There's good evidence for chaseberry and relieving um, symptoms of nostalgia. Nostalgia is breast tenderness related to estrogen dominance often. Um, so we brought this herb on for her, um, and in some cases, certain women, I will also um, consider use of supplemental progesterone when herbs aren't working well. So next, um, our goal is to reduce her exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals, um, which can raise estrogen levels. 
So endocrine disrupting chemicals are xenoestrogens. So xenoestrogens are estrogen mimics um, that um, can increase our risk for breast cancer. And as I said, raise our estrogen levels because it stimulates estrogen receptors. Um, so BPA, phthalates, most of us are familiar with these. Um, they are present in hard plastics, canned food, um, plastic containers, um, cosmetics even, um, and hygiene products, household cleaners. Um, and so I wanted to educate her on um, reducing the amount of any of these exposures so that it's not contributing to that estrogen dominance. There's a great app available um, to help determine um, what um, types of products contain these endocrine disrupting chemicals. Um, and it's the Environmental Working Group again has this app called Healthy Living um, that you can check out if interested in finding out more about that. So um, we also want to support detoxification and elimination um, and um, for the estrogen dominance to help with that estrogen to progesterone balance. Um, as I mentioned, some women are, are um, making more estrogen um, because of e either being overweight or not clearing um, their estrogen well. So to support estrogen detoxification, um, it's really important that we're limiting our alcohol, um, that we're eating a wide variety of organic um, fruits and vegetables, um, uh, including those cruciferous vegetables that, that contain um, these two components called DIM and I3C. So DIM is diendylmethane and I3C is indyl-3-carbonyl. Um, and these um, two components of cruciferous vegetables help us push our estrogens down healthy pathways. Um, it, it also comes in supplement form. Um, I generally try to use food as medicine first, but in some women um, with very high estrogen levels, I will recommend this supplement. Um, also want to promote plenty of fiber to promote those daily bowel movements. Um, and sometimes I will bring in supplemental fiber um, or magnesium citrate or magnesium glycinate. Um, both of these help move the bowels. Um, we want to get Linda exercising more um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, hydrating more, um, exercise to promote the sweat, um, and then controlling her weight through all of these measures. So um, last but not least, um, with the goals here in managing her estrogen dominance is managing her stress. And in fact, this is probably the most important goal because we want to stop that cortisol steal that I mentioned earlier, which is really perpetuating um, the estrogen dominance. Um, so for Linda, I taught her um, about some apps that are available um, to do some guided meditation. Um, most of these are um, free that you can download on your iPhone. Some of them are at cost. And for her, we had her set an initial goal of five to 10 minutes a day. Um, it really doesn't take a lot of um, mind-body medicine um, um, into your day to calm down your nervous system. Um, so um, when we are stressed, um, our sympathetic nervous system is the part of that nervous system that is in fight or flight. Um, and chronic stress can mean that we're in chronic fight or flight. Um, and that, that can lead to being productive, but over time, it wears out our cortisol. Um, so it is a, a survival space, but it's not a healing space, and it's not meant to be chronically stimula stimulated. So these mind-body tools engage our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest-digest component of our nervous system, um, which allows for healing and repair. Um, so also talk to her about doing some breath work, um, and here I've listed a few different tools for that. Um, and also referred her to a, a course um, created by John Kabat-Zinn um, called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, which is an eight-week course um, which teaches tools um, to cultivate more mindfulness in our day-to-day -day lives. 
So in summary for Linda, our treatment goals um, included addressing her chronic inflammation through um, her nutrition, her exercise, her stress, um, her sleep and toxin exposures, um, reducing exposure to those endocrine disrupting chemicals, supporting her elimination and detoxification, and helping her with managing her stress. So her six month treatment plan um, included the, her, the anti-inflammatory diet that we talked about, bringing in some probiotic foods, um, replacing the micronutrient deficiencies, including vitamin D and iron, um, brought in some fish oil because um, it is an anti-inflammatory supplement and she uh, doesn't care for fish, so is not eating much in her diet. And omega-3s are so important for cellular health and for brain health. Um, got her exercising four times a week. Um, for sleep, we're supporting that with some magnesium at bedtime. Um, magnesium is a natural muscle relaxant, works really well to help sleep. Um, also brought in the meditation um, and that circadian clock awareness with trying to create a rhythm with our sleep, our wake patterns, and our eating patterns. Um, the chase tree herb for six months to help her with that estrogen to progesterone balance. Um, minimizing the exposures to those chemicals, um, supporting her elimination and detox um, by getting her to have regular bowel movements with the magnesium and the fiber, the exercise and the hydration. And then for stress management, um, the guided meditation, the breathing exercises, um, the mindfulness-based stress reduction course, and, and um, generally just more fun, more, more date nights with her husband. So six months later, um, Linda is, is feeling better. Her energy's improved. Her mood is calmer. Um, she's, her focus and concentration has um, improved, um, as well as her libido. Um, her sleep is more restful. Her PMS symptoms are under better control. And she's had a modest weight loss of, of seven pounds, remembering that, that um, she had gained um, about 15 pounds, so she's halfway there, and she's pleased with that. Um, so hopefully that um, gave you some insight into an integrative medicine approach um, to perimenopause and hormone balance. Um, uh, just want to thank everyone for tuning in, and I've listed my contact information here for any of um, anyone who might be interested in pursuing an integrative medicine evaluation. Um, I have a special interest in women's health and hormone balance. However, um, I do practice general integrative medicine, um, and the details of my bio are on our website. Um, if you are interested in getting a copy of the slides um, that I presented here, you are welcome to call our Roseville office um, so we can get your email and send those off to you. Um, so thank you um, and be well. <laughs>